Hello everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome one and all. Welcome to Leisure Suit Larry 2. Sort of. Before we get started, for those who are interested, uh, those who are not, just fast forward. Here is actually an updated history of Leisure Suit Larry. His origin story and kind of sort of where he is now. Uh, this is part of the manual of Leisure Suit Larry 2. Read along with me, folks. Some of this is the same, but uh, they they updated it a little bit, I think, for modern sense. Well, not modern sensibilities. This game was actually made in 1988, which was earlier than the VGA remake manual that I read. Or was that from the original? I don't know. This is the way Leisure Suit Larry looked not so long ago. A confirmed bachelor. Larry lived with his mother and really didn't get out much. It wasn't until well after his 38th birthday that Larry realized that life was passing him by. After work each evening, when his married friends went home to their wives and his divorced friends went home with someone else, Larry had nowhere to go. He was restless and lonely. He found himself staring at girls again and reading cartoon ads with titles like The Insult That Made a Man Out of Stan. Don't know what that means. He dreamed of being a rock star like Barry Manilow or Christopher Cross and being mauled by chicks who just couldn't keep their hands off of him. Larry's mother didn't know what to do. She had watched Larry through his birth, his childhood, his adulthood, and his second childhood. Now Larry has reached what only could be called a second puberty. He walked around in a daze, spent hours in his room with the door closed and the stereo blaring. He hid National Geographics under his bed, in his bookcase, and everywhere. So Mom did the only just and noble thing. She kicked Larry out of the house and bought herself a single condo in South Florida. This is the way Larry looked just one month after his mother threw him out of the house. Notice the crisp white leisure suit, the genuine gold lacquer chains, these stepping out elevator shoes, and the Saturday Night Fever bouffant haircut. Let there be no doubt, with all the changes Larry went through, he was still a jerk. But now he looked the part. A trip to lost wages was the turning point for Larry. He arrived in the city looking for action. His assault on the city started at Lefty's Lounge, a combination cocktail lounge and brothel. He delighted the disco dames with a 360-degree move that has to be seen to be believed. And, quite by accident, he found out what it was like to find a perfectly wonderful woman worthy of more than just a one-night stand. It was a jolting experience for Larry and forever changed his views on what he wanted from a woman. This is the way Leisure Suit Larry looks today. He's a little older, a little wiser, and a little more eager to settle down. Amazingly enough, though, after all that's happened, Larry is still a jerk. However, there is still time for Larry to change. He can't be a jerk forever. Or can he? This is interesting. This is actually telling us that due to his experiences in lost wages and meeting Eve and having what appeared to be a one night stand, this sort of unlocked the emotion that he needed inside of him to say, maybe there's more to life. Maybe I'm looking for long term companionship and an equal and a and a friend and to eventually marry and settle down. Imagine little Larry kids. Sadly, as we know, there are seven games plus in this series. It is not to be. But anyway, enough with origin stories. Let's get losering. There we go. Larry, live the domestic life. Check you out. Oh, this must be Eve. Eve, baby! You greet the woman with love in your voice. You're finally home. I've been worried sick about you. Who are you? Asked the voluptuous woman in the magnificent red sports car. And why are you mowing my lawn? Why, Eve! Don't you remember me? It's Larry! Larry Laffer? We met in that hot tub at Lost Wages, in your luxury penthouse apartment, in the land of the lounge lizards, just before my big finale at the end of the game, remember? Vaguely, she says. So why are you here? Well, I, 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 I just assume when two people are in deeply as in love as we are, the natural thing to do is to move in together, so here I am. Move in, you creep. You've got exactly five minutes to get everything out of my house and out of my life. Brutus, she commands her dog. On guard! Oh no, it's the pee dog. Hmm, you think to yourself, that dog looks rather familiar. I'll be back here in five minutes, Eve shouts, and you won't! And there it is, my piddling reward. Oh, for my... Mm. <sighs> Brutus, stop urinating. Thank you. 
What, where are you going? You didn't urinate over the rest of my leg yet. Gee, Larry, it looks like things were just the way they used to be. You thought your life was complete. You had found a true love with a beautiful woman, with a beautiful car, and a beautiful home, and all of beautiful Los Angeles. But instead, you're out on the streets again. What will you do? Meanwhile, on the beautiful tropical island paradise of None Tonight Island, located somewhere in South Pacific... South Pacific, a formerly famed weather phenomenon that occurs once again. I'm sorry, my tongue apparently just filled up my entire mouth. The island's native tribe has grown accustomed to the recent occurrences of dense fog, even though it appears and dissipates quite rapidly. See, this game has an overarching plot, which I admire. There's no sound effects here, so I'll just help you out. Dub, 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 dub. What the natives don't know, however, is that the fog is just a smokescreen to cover the activities of an evil force so sinister, so sly, so slick, that the mere mention of his names brings fear to the heart of the staunchest men. No nookie! Which is really parsed weird. Ah, uh, into my mouth, um. You just got a big Cyclops Mountain just gobbled him right up. And turn the waterfall back on. See, I like this. It's not just about Larry trying out to get, you know, get laid or whatever. Inside this volcanic mountain fortress, the dirty doctor is designing the most disgusting of his dastardly deeds. Mwah. Wow, the intro is a lot longer than I remember it being. Where is that woman? Why is he so slow? Shouts Dr. Nonoki. She should be here by now. Bzzzt, bzzzt, bzzzt. Is it bzzzt? I'm helping the sound effects. Bzzzt. Aha, here she is. That's more like it, he says. Eventually, I'm a patient man. That's his no shirt. Oh, no, Nookie, I get it. Calling LA. Calling LA, he says into the microphone. Yes, sir. Responds a female voice on the radio. Is everything in place for the transfer, he asks. Everything. She snaps back. He smiles a broad smile. Excellent, L.A. Keep me informed, he concludes. And remember, no mistakes. Evidently, the bad doctor is planning something to do with Los Angeles and some sort of transfer. What could it be? Fan me, he shouts. And now! Yes, it's really cool. All right. Now, feed me grapes, he orders with a sinister smile, and keep them coming. Gosh, Larry, let's hope you never end up on the bad side of this character. <laughs> All right, and there's the intro. At last. It took me like five times getting the game running to get that to actually play, because I kept skipping it by mistake. So here we are. This is Leisure Suit Larry 2. It looks a little bit better than the uh, original Leisure Suit Larry, not the, VG, not the VGA remake that we played. This is like version 2 of uh, the Creative Interpreter. I think it's called the S SCI, uh, Sierra Creative Interpreter, or is this H? I don't remember. I always get it backwards. Anyway, so it's a little bit more higher res. They had mouse support, so you can move around with a mouse, which is really nifty. Um, everything else follows the text parser system, which is right here. Hello. Hi, says the game. Now, the first thing we have to do before we get started is to up the filth level to its absolute and utter maximum. Dirtier, dirtier, yeah, that, that'll do. All the way. Thank you so much. Why, well, you dirty little bastard. All right, so there we go. We'll turn it all the way up, and then if anything needs to be censored, we'll do it later. So you get a rank and a score, which is neat. And the rank, I think, just kind of goes like, you know, novice, lame schmuck. Whatever. I don't think it actually becomes anything good. And now, there's also the uh, trite phrase of the game, which I'll introduce you to as we go along. Now, what's going to happen with the trite phrase is, at the end of every conversation, somebody will say, Have a nice day, or goodbye, or whatever. And you can replace that with whatever you want. So, go down into the comments down below. You'll see another little Google form. Go in and type in whatever you want. I, I opened up voting already or people giving me their ideas and I already put our first trite phrase in so we'll see that when it pops up and it'll probably catch me by surprise my the original idea was to do a new trite phrase every episode but I got so many good ones that I'm just going to change them at random intervals just to keep us on our toes so we'll see all right so the game we, we don't really have a goal just yet oh that's right I'm trying to use WASD but I can't but I can still control with the uh, mouse keys which is a lot more herky-jerky for some reason 
If I move with a mouse, it's very fluid. Speaking of which, let's turn the speed up a little bit. I thought it was in this game, or maybe it was another one, that in order to up the filth level, you had to keep hitting a button, and it would just keep going up by, like, one rank. And you had to do that literally 50 times. It was crazy. Maybe it was a, an older version of this game, because I don't remember that sliding thingamabob. I remember... Now, this game is really unforgiving. Extraordinarily unforgiving. If you forget one thing, you enter a series of events that if you don't have everything that you need, then you're in an unwinnable state and you won't know it for like another hour. Let's see. Look, garage. Goraz. Gorge. Uh, you start to carefully find nothing in this part of the garage, which is a hint to go over here. F3 button always brings up the last thing you typed. Hey, what's this? Eve left a dollar bill stuffed in this old pair of pants. See, get dollar bill. I'm a very slow typer, so I apologize in advance. You briefly consider the morality of this move, but after all, she hasn't done for you. That was a really awkward sentence. You decide it's the probably the least she can do. Three points. I've upped my rank to dweeb. This is a really nice house. We're on the corner of Ascot and what? Ascot and Ball Road. Ball, Ascot. Ascot and Ball. Ball and Ascot. I get it. There it is. I knew there was a joke in there somewhere. Ball and ass. Ball and ascot? Is that what it's supposed to be? I don't know. Whatever. It's kind of cool. Now that I sort of live in the LA area, I can kind of explore what is essentially now my hometown. Look, house. You were so sure this would be the location of your future happy life with Eve, but some things are not to be. Uh, there's not too much else I can do in the house or around the house, I don't think. All the plants here are made of a polyvinyl chloride or some other monoxide breathing substance. This must have been before the uh, drought. Or, I don't know, maybe it was uh, maybe it was during the drought. I don't know, if everyone's using pl fake plants and polystyrene. Oh, hey, oh, we live, must is, uh, we're in Anaheim. That's where we are, so this must be... Uh, Disney World or Disneyland? Sorry. Look, theme park. Don't ever say theme to me again, you dirty, dirty boy. Okay, look, park. Hey, is that Disneyland? I think it is. Nah, not an Allo game. Hmm, I wonder if we can look at all the individual little parts. Don't ever say monorail to me again. All right, fine, fine. You get a fet, you. So, this is the exploration phase of Leisure Suit Larry 2. Where we literally, honestly have no direction whatsoever. We just walk around and things just kind of happen. Speaking of which, I should probably save. I hope I don't think crossing the road will hurt you, but let's find out. We made it. Good. All right, so there's a music shop over here. Oh, the lights change. That's adorable. I wonder if it's actually any safer to pass at any given moment. All right, we'll come back to the ethnomusicology shop in a sec, but let's explore downtown LA. So we have... The Molto Lira, which means many bucks on Rodeo Drive. Oh, wow. She does live in an awesome part of town. She lives right off of Rodeo. Amazing. Oh, we got the Brown Derby, which is closed. I remember hearing about that. The Brown Derby, I think it was a restaurant at something. Place is closed for years. It's in desperate need of blocking. Don't know what that means. Blocking? There. I'm blocking it. No one can get in. And we got the convenience store. Swab's Drugs. Let's see. Channeling crystal clearance. 50% off. The lightest healing herbs. Is that what it says? Is the rest of it over here? The lightest. That's definitely an L. The lightest in... That doesn't make any sense. Oh, well. The best in healing herbs. Uh, we make home computers, entertain mo, etc., etc. Try our new channeling powder. Wow, this is really new age. I don't see any crystals or channeling powder anywhere, unless they're in this little cupboard back here. Are channeling crystals by prescription? The sign on the druggist counter, you presume the druggist is out. The only the clerk remains, and he doesn't look too bright. Do you have anything here that costs a dollar or less? You ask him. Nope. Sorry, bro. All right, well, I guess we have no... <gasps> is this a bin full of bowls? Just as it appears. Uh, you should totally have a little bit more attention to that because that's cool. I don't remember what I need to do here. It's been a long time since I played this game. I have a cursory knowledge of what I need to do. But, yeah, 
I'd rather just experience it. Sitting by the dock of the bay. So we can't go any of these places because it's blocked off by the bubby types, the scruffy dog saloon. That dog looks familiar. Wasn't he a, um, a spokesman for some kind of a, a beer or something? Uh, not Spuds McKenzie. No, no, no. It was a logo of something in the 80s. Oh, what was it? It's going to bother me forever. No, it is Spuds McKenzie. There it is. It's a pic- I just kind of looked up famous dogs or in Spuds McKenzie. And yeah, there it was a commercial for Bud Light back from like 1987. And this was made in the 1988. So that's kind of kind of works, I guess. Uh, copyright infringement. Be damned. Cool. And I can walk across the street and not get run over. So there's a barber shop over here. There's the docks, which will be important later. Actually, this barber shop will be important later too. But for now, I have a very specific destination in mind. Oh, that gooey LA sky. Not a bird to be seen. All dead. There we are. It was hidden behind the drug mart. There's the quickie mart. That's what we want. I wonder if Saddam still works here. This Quickie Mart has many items for sale. A clerk lounges sleepily behind the counter near our lottery ticket machine. There's a soda dispenser near the front window. Okay, so we have a dollar to our name. Oh my God, look at the size of this cup. This is definitely not New York City. Dollar, dollar bill. Y'all, so we're going to use our last plug dollar. All the money I have in the world is this one dollar bill to buy a lottery ticket. And guess what might happen to drive the, the whole story forward? Hello, baby, you tell her. My name is Larry. Huh? Larry Laffer? Hi, y'all. She's a, she replies in a charming draw. Y'all sure have a white suit. You've always admired Southern girls. It'll say that about every single girl you ever meet, regardless. Ooh, what's the magazines behind you? Doesn't look interesting. Well, are you sure this is a Larry game? Here's my last dollar, you say, handing it to the cute clerk. How about selling me one of those luckle bucko lottery tickets? All right, partner, says the clerk. Here you go. Just stick this hair ticket in that machine on the end of the counter. Good luck. Kiss it, slap it. <laughs> There's our first trite phrase. Kiss it, slappy. Love it. All right, here we go. You insert your paper ticket into the lucko bucko machine. We have our lotto ticket. May this easily be your chance to fame and to fortune, but probably not. All right, so we're we are flat broke, but I guess we just have to wait for the lottery program to show. We got to find a TV. Where's a TV? Isn't that the way they do it? What's this back here? There's a big hole in the fence. Look, hole. You bend over and peer through the knot hole in the fence. On the other side, you see people playing Police Quest. How oh, you wish you were one of them. Oh, yeah, I upgraded to Jerk for that. Nice. It really looks like it's about crotch level, so it looks like that should be showing someone playing the game Quest for Glory. Yep, that's the LA I kind of know. Oh, that no, no, that's not quite fair. Maybe the smog problem in the 80s was a lot worse. The traffic doesn't seem any better, but, uh, yeah, you can't even see the Hollywood Hills from here. They've gone through a really big initiative to reduce the amount of smog that there is in LA, and it, it actually looks really pretty, but, you know, the visibility is still not that great. All right, well, lotto ticket in hand. Let's just go start visiting everybody. Let's go see what's in the ethnomusicology shoppy. Oh, you're going to really maybe... All right, open door. It appears these doors are locked. Oh, since there's a sign that says, watch for our grand opening real soon now. The dear door... Well, barring that, let's go see what's up in the TV studio. If I'm going to find a TV set to watch the lottery, this is where to find it. Hi there, sweet cheeks. Wow. Mm, how's the bubblegum? You find dull woman sexy. Then again, you find any woman sexy. Hi, big, blonde, and beautiful. My name is Larry. Huh? Larry Laffer? Who are you? Can I help you? No, no, she's going to be of no help whatsoever. I oh, I just looked at my ticket. Say, you asked the receptionist, is this lottery ticket any good? I don't know what she replied. I misplaced my glasses. And... Best I can remember this week's Lucky Life Lottery Lucko Buckle numbers. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What six numbers do you have? Well, uh, just so happens to be those. Let me just jot that down. 
What six numbers do I have? Well, just you wait, I'll tell you. What? That's correct, she says excitedly. You are a lucky guy. The last Lucky Life Lottery show of the season is being taped right now. I'll notify the director that you're here. I'll show, I'm sure you'll be called immediately. Blank, and I'll lock the door to the green room so you can wait there. That, that, that voice just went everywhere. Oh, by the way, she says, receptionist, don't get nervous that you're because because you're on live television and watched by millions of people. She chuckles softly under her breath. What, no salutation? You're not going to tell me to, uh, oh, I forgot what the salutation was already. All right, awesome. All right, so I have the quote-unquote winning lottery ticket, uh, which apparently I had to show to a TV studio type person to figure out, uh, well, whatever. Um, what do I do? What do I do? Look. TV. The mother shows one lovely young lady. The other just static. What happens if I open this door? Uh, I can't. They're all locked. There is need. Just re just be patient. Have a seat. Kick back and relax. All right. Well, fine. I'll sit down and wait my turn. Wow. I got ranked up to a slug just for sitting. All right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks like I still have my pocket protector in my leisure suit. That can't be do winning me any points with, well, anybody. Hey, hello, there you are. Oh, say you, poo-poo, cries the man. You're late. Where have you been, you silly little dickens? We've been just worried to think about you. Before you can answer him, he tells her, hurry up, hurry up, honey, you're on. Let's go. It's the sweater that makes... Oh, I, I, had, I had to type Stan. My apologies. There we go. My apologies also for the stereotyping. In we go. It was the 80s. The control room talkback speaker crackles. Five seconds air, boys and girls. Five seconds air, please, everybody. He has a, he has a lisp. Uh, a hair lip a bit. Uh, this doesn't look at all like the expected lottery show to look, but just in case you decide to grab a seat on the empty stool over there. Oh, that it does on its own. Come on, cameraman, get over to me. Put the camera where the money is. The voiceover announcer says, From Hollywood, it's the latest and greatest in embarrassment programming, the all-new Dating Connection. And here's your host, Biff Barr. Oh God, look at his face go. Thank you and welcome, welcome everybody. So glad you're here for the all new Dating Connection. We're just about ready to play with our game, so let's meet our contestants. Who is gonna make their big Dating Connection today? Biff, lovely, lovely bachelor, and his Barbara Bimbo of Bearhead, California. Bah, Barbara's hobbies are computer programming, good creating unusual milkshakes, and tantalizing elderly men. She lists her turn-ons as industrial-grade blenders and RS-232 interfacing. Hey, we read the intro for the last game. We know that's right up our alley. That was our favorite book or instruction manual. Turn-offs include international military conflicts and the aroma of rosin corsage. Well, what does she do for a living? On the left is bachelor number one, a professional surfboard waxer from Gumbo, Missouri. His hobbies include collecting Braunschweiger casings, speculating on the sexual preference of professional dancers, and watching television op televised opera with the sound off. Meet Davey Blair. Come on, camera, get over there. Bachelor number two is today's token intellectual. He is presently chairman of the physics department at our local university, FU. Originally from Pakistan, Ohio, meet Raghuka Singh Soong. Hey, that's not the church name. Uh, excuse me. Uh, my name is Larry. Larry Laffer. Okay, Raghuka Larry. Whatever you want to call yourself is okay with me. And on the far right today is bachelor number three, a journalism major who quit college in order to pursue his, pursue his dream job. Fact checker on the National Enquirer newspaper. Currently unemployed, meet AP Wire. AP Wire. I wonder what that means. That ah, music budget ran out. And now it's time to play The Dating Connection, says Biff Barf. Barbara, may we have your first question, please? Okay, like, Biff, you know, thanks. Uh, bachelor number one, like, uh, this one's for you. If I was to, like, go on a date with you, you know, and, like, uh, and you was, I don't know, just all up in something, and the car busted, and we had to walk for help, and I, like, broke... Uh, you know, a heel? Like, how would you fix it? Like, you know, it seems obvious her elevator doesn't quite reach your penthouse. 
Why, beautiful, if you were with me, you wouldn't have anything to worry about any old breakdown. We'd be cruising in my brand new Porsche, and you wouldn't have to care in the world. Besides, if you'd something did happen to your heel, I'd just sweep you up in these muscular arms and carry you wherever you wanted to go. When you're a top-notch physical specimen like me, a light little feather like you would be a breeze. You're not sure even this mental midget would fall for a cornball line like that. And of course she is. Jeez, oh, how romantic. Like, how much can a girl want? Well, Bachelor Run, you're number one with me. So much for your theory, Larry. That camera guy's getting a workout. And now, uh, how about you, Bachelor number two? Uh, how would you solve this puzzle? Okay, Larry, that's your cue. You're on. Uh, frozen. Oh, give him my best line. Okay, I got to solve this problem in apparently about 40 characters. There we go. I'm sure this will win over her entirely. I am, after all, a slug. Well, um, uh, repair the heel with that solder that you hate. Who let in that jerk? Oh, what a pots. Oh, he's got to kneel down to get me. You saying I'm short, cameraman? Barbara attempts to assume an intelligent expression. Now, um, how about you, bachelor number, you know, three? Bachelorette Barbara, my deepest personal feelings are that you are far too sexy for, uh, for me to ever allow you to leave my highly expensive beachfront swinging bachelor apartment. You and I would spend all our time together alone, sharing each other in every way, if you know what I mean. How's that for a way with words? So, essentially, it's like, you're not actually going to leave the house. Uh, you're going to be my kept woman, says him, which I'm sure she's going to love for some reason. Oh, how sexy. Like, what more could any girl want? You may bachelor number three on this program, but you're number one in my heart. Do you think someone was still watching this tripe? Barbara, in my opinion, you have just asked one of the best questions ever, says Bitbarf. Now, do you think you can come up with another great question? But isn't this scripted? Is she actually doing this on the top of her head? Once again, Barbara burns off a few million brain cells attempting to rise to the occasion. Okay, like, thanks, Biff. I, you know, okay, bachelor number one, like, this one's for you. Like, if you was, you know, like, an insect and I was, like, you know, a flower, what kind of, you know, insect uh, would you, like, be and, like, what kind of flower am I? Ugh. <sighs> Barbara, responds bachelor number one, I'd be, be a beautiful butterfly and you'd be my tender little buttercup. Together we build a, a wonderful garden of love. At least this garden will be well fertilized. I get it because it's full of bulls. Like you are quite the charmer, aren't you number one? She gushes. I love to sow a few seeds with you. Biff, must I like waste time asking El Dorco this question? Biff responds, Why, yes, of course, Bachelorette Barbara, you must follow the rules. Okay, boy number two. Can you even, like, remember the question? Come on, Larry, fire your best shot. Um, I think that is, uh, I'm a stingwing baby, and you're a bloat fly. Even though this came out before the advent of Fallout 4. Actually, probably the original Fallout 2. Anyway, play. Like, what planet being this spooked down? I've heard better lines in, like, you know, a nursing home. Well, a bachelor number three, uh, I can't, you know, wait to learn, like, what kind of insect you are and, like, what kind of flower I am. You know, oh, she was supposed to be a flower. I could have called her, like, a hub flower or something. Damn it. Ruined it. At least I got to call her a bloat fly. That makes me feel much better. Barbie doll, you be my precious American beauty rose and I be your little bumblebee. I know you'd enjoy rubbing a little of my pollen on my stinger. I said that wrong, but that's probably just as good. Does this show supply antacids? Well, number three, we certainly are the oversex little devil, aren't we? <laughs> I'm afraid that's all the time we have for questions today. Bachelor and Barbie, it's time for you to make your dating connection. Well, Biff, it's really difficult to choose. Like, both men are really terrific. Somehow that makes you feel like both doesn't include you. Yes, but I'm sure the audience has already made its decision. Yeah, says Barbie, I made my decision, you know, too. Biff looks surprised. Okay, bachelor number two it is. But frankly, bachelorette, I, I must, uh, I must admit I'm a little surprised. Did she say bachelor number two? Barbara, I think most of us expected a different choice. Well, 
Alright, Bill, I went to bachelor number three. I'm sorry, Barbara. The rules clearly say your first decision is final. Let's find out what they've won. A voiceover announcer boobs. It's a cruise. Ooh. Yes, a romantic cruise on the South Pacific in the beautiful USS Love Tub. You'll spend a solid month together exploring exotic ports of call courtesy of Wonder Cruise Lines. Remember, if it's a good cruise, it's a wonder. Larry, close your mouth, you all not to call fish. And for our other lucky contestants, why you lucky fellows have won a year's supply of armadillo polish, 20 cases of black shoelaces, plus a copy of our home game. Hey, man, there ain't no way I'm spending no month on a boat with this jerk. I want a chance to hit on that number three guy. I'm sure she's really, truly delighted, folks. Now, let's hear it. Let's really hear it for our lucky couple. I swear. Yay. Yeah, yeah, woo. Be sure to tune in tomorrow night, same time, same station, for the finest in embarrassment programming, the all-new Dating Connection. Good night. The control room speaker crackles. All right, that's another one in the can. Barnooka Larry, please refer to the green room to receive the prize. Uh, rest of your destiny, right, y'all. Fantastic. I won the dating connection somehow, and I've ranked up the kumquat. Gosh, Larry, what good luck you have winning a fun-filled month-long cruise with that lovely bachelorette Barbara. Fantastic. The assistant producer looks at you with disdain. Well, Laffer, I must admit, none of us in the control room expected you to win. I'm sure they're not proud of the outcome, but rules are rules, I suppose. Here's your cruise ship ticket. I'll have all of the dating connection with you the best of luck. You'll need it. Fantastic! Well, that's good for now. So, so far, I've technically won the lottery. I won a dating show game. What's in store for Larry next? We'll never know. Well, actually, we will know because we're going to continue this in the next part, ladies and gentlemen. So, I will see you next time as well as Larry. But for now, good night, jelly beans.